Sunday. And there's Chad Green, another car, different look this weekend, but a good a good race a couple of weeks ago. And they're they're once again back on track, running as good as they did at the end of last year. So two good teams right here. And to your point earlier, it's GR Todd that has the luxury of taking what he did in the first session and trying to improve big here. See what Todd Smith and John Oberhofer have cooked up for their driver now. Oh, a big backfire for Todd. Parts of the body raining out of the sky. Meanwhile, Chad Green runs 394 2 at 325. A very strange set of circumstances for J.R. Todd. It did not seem to be unhappy until it was. So there was something mechanically that went wrong. Here it is again. It could be ignition related. I mean, and that was a big one. I mean, that was big. Yeah, and it would have been a lot it would have been a lot worse. I mean, that's probably 100 feet off of the starting line. There's a cylinder out right before, so there's a good wow. chance you can see all the fuel that just lifts the oh, plate. It was Paul Lee on the racetrack next to Chad Green. Green wearing the Tony's BP colors, the FTI Performance, Power Bill Tools, McLeod Clutch's Dodge of Paul Lee. It was Paul Lee the quicker of the two here, an impressive 390 to put Lee, Lee in the number six spot. The snap on makers and fixers Dodge and Chad Green in the Ford Mustang with BP and Summit Racing Equipment, Jordan Vandergrip. I walked in on Chad this morning watching two of his crew guys tear down an engine block. I asked Chad, I said, what are they doing? He said, we're going to need it. We are going to need it for the semis. Chad Green is coming in today super confident, only with a 394, but guys, I think he's a car in this hot weather that can get the job done. Cruz Pedragon is hoping to be the man to get off the blocks first. Green's car smokes. Oh, Petragon runs over the blocks. He gets down to 1,000 feet, and the nerf is continuing to rain from the sky. So Chad Green is the winner because of the centerline foul penalty for Cruz Petragon. Yeah, and for the snap-on team, it just seemed like the hard work was paying off. They they have this car qualified on the in the top half of the field. And when Chad Green started to encounter some problems by way of tire smoke, you could see the problem, and the reason that snap-on car pushes to the inside, that misfiring cylinder, what it does, it changes the aerodynamics of the car because you have four cylinders on this side against three on this side. Well, the four cylinders are going to overcome the steering, and by the time the driver realizes it or gets off the throttle, he's in the heat of battle, he's in competition, he knows he could probably hear the sound of his opponent outside the window, so the majority of these drivers just cannot react as quick as they would like to, and the same problem for Chad Green. However, the misfiring cylinders was due to his car losing traction in the middle of the course. A bit of a blessing in disguise for Green. Had he been absolutely next to Pedragon, that one could have got ugly. And we now go to the top end of the racetrack, getting one last look at Cruz, who had the full left rudder in that car, but it wouldn't go anywhere. High drama here. We need to go back to the starting line because Bob Task of the third and Chad Green have a little bit of a contest. They need to settle here. We look down for the Pep Boys drone, the Ford Motorcraft quick lane Mustang and the blacked out Mustang of Chad Green wearing the summit colors at BP this weekend. Task is up by the center line. Green's going to drive around him. Holy Christmas. Chad Green was dead to rights on the starting line. Tasca was 67. Green was 165. This is, a, this is a race that is beyond compare, Tony. Well, let's see how sharp our viewers at home are. One observation that I made, and we're going to try to pull up the shot when both cars were getting ready to stage. It's an overhead shot. And take a look at the Motorcraft car. It appears that it is pointing towards the inside. Wide open throttle. You can see the big hole shot that Bob Tasky gets off the starting line. But it was, we move into the frame. Take a look at your right side of your screen. The car launches. There's the cylinder starting to misfire. And like the snap-on car in the previous round, when and that cylinder loses fire, it is going to push that car towards the inside. There's not a lot that the driver can do for Tasca wisely making that split second decision. Either go across the center line, get disqualified, or get off the throttle and hope that your opponent is having bigger problems. But even to Jad Chad Green's credit, and there it is pointing to the inside right there, it is going to drift to the inside, but it is when the cylinder starts to misfire, it doesn't allow the driver a lot of time to react. You can see just the big starting line advantage, but for Tasca, there is the problem right there. The misfire, it's pushing the car to the inside, and he makes the better decision, but it is Chad Green that chases him down, and that's a, a sign of good experience from Chad. So now we have seen this 
on both sides today, Tony. The red light, we've seen the delayed reaction times of some drivers, and it's been very interesting. Now, starting line here, semifinals of Nitro Funny Car. Blake Alexander, right side of your screen, the head contractor's Toronto Auto Service Center car. Chad Green across the racetrack. Of course, Chad Green finds himself in this position because Bob Tasca, who left on him by a mile, smoked the tires and had to lift. For Blake Alexander, this car has looked as good as it has all year long. Well, it started from the number three qualifying position, and I agree with you. This is as good a car and as good a Blake Alexander that we have seen in the last couple of years. And it is red light-itis has stricken America as we now look down and see Blake Alexander going to a final round, 394.8, 320 miles an hour, and Chad Green just about matched Ida Zetterstrom on the early side. Apparently, it is contagious.